All right, and recording is going. So, um, I wanted to get as many people in the community here as possible, so that we could uh, we could kind of have uh, you know a state of the game, a state of the community, and a uh, whatnot. Uh, check in with some folks, you know, see how everybody's doing, and then discuss where we're going to kind of go from here uh, with uh, Adventures League, uh, you know, in the near future. Um, I'm going to go over maybe a little bit too much stuff, but I want to try and hit as much stuff as everybody's going to have questions on. So it's going to include local venues, charity events, and conventions, just because that's kind of all of what everybody here kind of enjoys doing. So um, first and foremost, uh, because we are in, our venues are in Dane County, um, we are definitely going to be following Dane County's lead as far as we'll be following all regulations at the least. Um, in most cases, we're actually going to be more aggressive than what the regulations are stipulating. Um, and so that is because of the fact that we have got a lot of members of our community that are um, immunocompromised, are uh, at risk either due to age, pre-existing conditions, um, um, whatever, whatever. Uh, Kurgan, do me a favor and uh, go ahead and mute yourself so that we don't get any feedback coming and that would be awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, anyways, uh, I, in talking with Brian uh, at uh, Misty Mountain Games, um, his feeling is, is that uh, it's going to be a while before he feels comfortable enough opening up the gaming space. Um, they might try and do some of the magic events, but uh, they're probably not even going to be uh, doing many of those. They, they're still doing magic online as the, uh, as the majority of what they're doing. Um, so in the, for the near future, we're going to continue to do our gaming through Discord uh, as we have been doing, or at least organizing it through Discord. Uh, it's up to you however you want to run it. If you want to run through Roll20, Zoom, whatever. Um, as we go forward, um, so first off, um, in case there's any new people, I should probably start off by introducing who all, who all of the organizers are because we have had a few new players start. Um, so your organizers that we've got currently on the call here um, are myself, uh, Brian, uh, and Ruth. Um, Brian and Ruth uh, hold the Monday nights at uh, Noble Nights. Um, Doc and I uh, do Thursdays at, uh, at Misty Mountain Games. Uh, Mark, um, and uh, at, before everything went down and everything went to hell, I believe Pickle was going to be helping out with Mark on Sundays at Misty Mountain Games. Um, I don't even know if he remembers that, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, so, um, in, in theory, Pickle is also one of our organizers. We just haven't needed an organizer since, uh, since he offered to uh, step in. Um, and, uh, at, uh, on Saturdays, it's normally Lance and I, but Lance is very busy. So, um, generally it's me. And then I usually try and rope Mark or Doc or, Ruth into helping me out on the Saturday events and the Saturday switch between uh, Pegasus Games and uh, and Noble Knight. Uh, Pegasus was the first uh, Saturday of uh, or the first second Saturday of the month and the fourth Saturday of the month is uh, Noble Knight, if I remember correctly. That could all change. Who knows? We're just doing one Saturday at Misty Mount or at uh, Pegasus and one Saturday at Noble Knight. That said, um, we have not spoken with Pegasus yet, um, but I'm guessing that with Pegasus games, it's gonna really fall down to, onto us, what we feel comfortable with. Um, and uh, likely the same with Noble Knight. Uh, I don't know, Brian or Ruth, if you've talked to Jess at all since, uh, since everything's kind of started opening up. I haven't reached out to them yet, no. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, last I heard, which was uh, around the time, like, uh, before all the protests started happening, so just at the time when 
uh, when the opening up was happening, um, they were in a, in a phase where they were just going to leave it locked down because um, it was too difficult to determine who's going to uh, get precedence over the other and, you know, the percentage of, uh, of occupancy you can have in the building. Um, it takes away from the number of paying customers that can come in and buy things. Uh, so that is where we are at currently as far as the local venues go. As far as the uh, as far as the charity events go, we're in the same boat. Reason being, um, the last charity event that we had had about 75 people, I think, in total with all the DMs and everything. Um, 75 people uh, goes above and beyond the 50% using the new estimated, you know, like we're in phase two now, um, limitations for any of our venues. So um, not exactly something that's gonna be feasible in the near future. Um, there have been some discussions about how to handle our marathon event. Um, in theory, we could do 24 hours virtually. Um, I think doing 24 hours virtually would be a true test of uh, whether or not we could pull that off because you're in a room all by yourself. There is no, nobody there that's going to be able to punch you and say, hey, wake up. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not adverse to the possibility of doing it that way, but uh, I, I can tell you it's going to be difficult at best. Um, so, yes. But it will be hilarious. It will be to hilarious. Watch who falls asleep first. That's a, it's going to be a question of how many people will be able to stream <laughs> for twenty four hours straight, and then then that could be fun. Uh, who I could will be awake get, at the end? The I ultimate could, test of endurance. <laughs> yeah, I could probably get Alex to let me keep twenty sides to every story for twenty four hours. But anyhow, so our charity event was supposed to happen in July. July is quickly approaching and uh, honestly we don't have any plans in which we're going to actually do that. Um, so that may or may not happen in July. It could happen later. It's, uh, it's going to remain to be seen. Um, we'll probably put something up on Discord, put out an email and start to discuss the possibilities of doing that. Um, I know that we still want to do that because uh, the charities are still uh, an important thing for um, a lot of us that are organizing, not to mention the community. Uh, it's just going to be a question of what, if people have got the time and energy that they want to put into it, and if people think that they're going to have the money to be able to donate towards it. I know that uh, I'm on 50% time, and I've just started getting my unemployment, so now I can actually afford to do donations again, but uh, it's going to be tricky for a lot of people if they're going to be able to pull that off. Um, that said, if we raise $10, we've helped out. So if it doesn't cost us anything and we wind up being able to do something for the charity, there's no reason not to. Um, so that will be coming in the future once we decide when we'd wanna run it um, and when it's going to be feasible to run that. Conventions, um, currently uh, D8 Summit still hopes to run in August, I think. I think they're backing up even a little bit further now from that. Um, I don't know if Illinois is just doing better than we are, but uh, um, uh, I know that uh, here and in Milwaukee for Cold Iron Conventions, Cold Iron Conventions has, uh, has canceled events for the rest of the year at least. Um, and it is still up in the air on whether or not the uh, conflagration is gonna happen, which is their first one in the, uh, in the um, winter in January, I think, late January, early February. Um, so nothing is going to be happening regionally and Gamehole Con is, uh, if you hadn't heard by now, is, uh, is officially canceled and we are going to be doing it uh, online. So um, if you are a dungeon master and you've got any skill running online, um, I'm going to be putting up a call to have people jump in and join the group on the uh, Gamehole Con website to become Dungeon Masters. And then we're gonna work on setting up a schedule. Um, it is going to be different than last year and the fact that we are, you're gonna tell us when you're able to run and I'm going to schedule you in for times. That way we can actually set up times and people can sign up for events. And it's, there's gonna be no instances of people signing up for an event that doesn't happen because it has no GM. 
Um, so um, if you're interested in uh, giving, it a, giving it a try, but you wanna know, uh, you know how, you're, how it's gonna be feasible, you haven't run a, a game online yet, um, I, will, uh, I will probably do another one of these giving uh, kind of a how to run the game online, at least at the base level. Um, at the very base level, if you just you want to run it through Discord with either an Avray bot or a just running it through Discord chat and you use dice and character sheets, you can do that for free. Um, Discord may or may not act nicely um, just because the Discord server is going to be getting a lot of usage during Game Hole Con weekend because it's the Game Hole Con uh, Discord server. Um, Otherwise, uh, the con is gonna run pretty much the same as it normally does, except we will not be running any interactives. Obviously, Phi Chen isn't gonna happen um, unless they tell me, hey, do you think we could run a Phi Chen virtually? I'll be like, sure, let's give it a shot. Um, <laughs> but uh, any of those interactive type events probably aren't gonna be happening. Um, uh, just because it's the feasibility of being able to pull it off is probably not good. Um, to that effect, D&D uh, &D Live potentially was going to have an epic and obviously did not because the logistics of pulling that off was just too much. Um, that's what tells me that even though uh, some online cons have, uh, have done epics, um, it's just not going to be something that uh, it's that is going to be the amount of work that we're willing to be able to put into it to make it be pulled off. Um, so we'll be doing single table events throughout the entire weekend for Game Hocon. That said, there's a lot of things that are uh, kind of coming down the pipeline that are going to uh, be different in Adventures League that are going to be in flux because of the situation we're in now with all of the COVID closings and uh, people, you know, venues not opening up and, you know, big venue events not being able to happen uh, like regional conventions. And that is going to be a, a constantly evolving state. Um, the big one that has already been announced is the fact that the con created content or the community created content program is changing. Um, the community created content for every, any conventions, uh, game uh, days, venues are going to be handled very similarly to the way that the salvage operations are being handled with, uh, with Eberron. Um, you have a kind of a key of events on how you can uh, write up a module for an event. It will be AL legal provided it is built within the framework of what they give you. And as far as, you know, what you're giving away, what, uh, how it's being run, how you set it up, monsters you're using, et cetera. So that will still be able to happen. What will not happen is you will not have CCC modules happening uh, anymore that are, not out, that are outside of Border Kingdoms and the Moonshays. Uh, a reason being is that uh, Game Hole Con and Baldwin Games are partners with uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast and the Adventures League program, which is established with, you know, they got the Moonshays. So if you want to write an AL mod in the Moonshays, it has to be done through Baldwin Games. If you run, want to write a mod in the Border Kingdoms for Adventures League, it has to be done through Game Hole Con. So, um, that is going to be a, a very different way of uh, handling things that has good points and bad points. The, uh, the, the bad side of it is the fact that there is no uh, Adventures League CCCs for smaller conventions. The good side of it is, is that it's much easier for somebody to just basically write a module and put it up on DMs Guild. Um, and if it's decent, then it'll sell. And if it sells, you'll get noticed and then you could possibly get invites in to write DDAL modules, to write special event stuff, uh, work on a convention for one of the Baldman or for Game Hole, things like that. So overall, I think it's a, it's a net positive because there's much more uh, uh, availability for people to you know, stretch those uh, writing muscles and, uh, and break in and show, uh, show what they can do. 
Um, so that's a, that's a positive. Uh, Border Kingdoms modules. Um, we have got 10 modules, including the very first tier four module for CCC program to be written coming out in November. Um, they are still going to come out. Um, so we will be putting them up to DMs Guild along with the Hero Camp modules that we wrote for this year and they will be available. Um, so once those are available, we'll be able to run them through Discord, through Zoom, however we want to run it locally, we'll be able to run that. Um, and seeing as a lot of the local community here is, uh, has played most of the uh, Border Kingdoms just by the grace of being in Madison and that's where we're writing them, um, we'll have plenty of content going forward uh, by the time we hit November. Uh, also, by the time we hit November, you're going to see, in theory, assuming that things haven't changed, we are gonna have the first three modules for season 10 available for Game Hole Con. Um, obviously, Ice Road Trackers was the first of those, the zero, zero. Um, I suppose technically that makes it four modules. So 10, zero, zero through 10, three. I believe is what we are slotted to have available for Game Hole Con. Um, so season 10 is going to have a slower opening than season nine did last year. Um, so if you, uh, if you are doing the math on that, that means that we are gonna have a whole lot of space that we're gonna have to fill up for Game Hole Con weekend with other content because we are literally gonna have four modules to run for DDAL season 10. Um, so there's going to be a lot of running the same module over and over again for people. And then uh, probably doing day shifts where you're doing, you know, mod one this day, mod two this day, going back to mod one, that kind of a thing. Um, so keep that in mind. Eberron, Eberron, we are gonna be up to, I believe will be probably three modules into tier two by the time November hits. So we'll have plenty of Eberron modules to run. I know our Thursday table, my Thursday table, I should say, is going to be starting Eberron this week. Um, unfortunately, we've got that funky little gold box from Beetle and Grimm's that we don't really get to use because we're doing it over Zoom, but we're still gonna start playing it. So, um, uh, so yeah. Um, so the gist of it is we are going to be doing slow opens in the venues, no conventions until at least spring of next year. And our charity events are going to be considered conventions um, unless we start to decide we want to try and do an online uh, charity event. Currently Jasper's Game Day and D8 Summit are running a lot of online charity uh, drives as well as Game Hole Con. So um, I'm, probably, except for the marathon, I'm probably just going to say we're gonna step back from the charity and events until we can do in-person events again. Um, just do our one big one that we kind of do every year and that's it. Um, so that is uh, that is where we're going at. If anybody's got questions, um, there's, there's only like 19 of us here. Um, uh, feel free. If you've got a question, um, you can either go ahead and unmute and ask your question or just put up uh, the question in chat or say that you have a question, I'll call on you. If there's any questions you have about AL events in Madison or conventions uh, for the foreseeable future. Has there been any word on season 10 rule changes yet? Uh, no. Um, there's been no discussion on the rule changes. Um, there will be some season 10 specifics, uh, kind of similar to the, like the Asimar and the Tiefling being able to have wings. Um, but uh, we don't know what they are yet. Um, but there's been no discussion of changing the overall rule set, like going back to experience points and gold versus milestones. It's It's likely going to be, that the uh, rule systems that we're using as far as advancement and whatnot are gonna stay the same. Um, you're still gonna use player's handbook plus one. Um, we're still going to use uh, 
any of the other rules that are uh, that are built into it. Um, and uh, and if you played in the D and D live events and you did not hear uh, yet, um, if you do not play that character until season ten, you can rebuild it as a season ten character with all of your advancement and whatnot still applied to the character. If you play it at all during between now and season 10's release, um, it becomes a season nine character. So that's uh, that's that's the only uh, for sure thing that we know. Um, season 10 specific rules will come out closer to September probably, once season 10 is going to release. Um, I think officially it releases in September, although I thought that Game Holcon was going to be one of the premieres for the Ice Road Trackers. I'm not entirely sure about that, though. That meeting was several months ago, and I've had a lot happen since then. Um, let's see. Duke, have, you, have we considered using Rollgate as another online platform? No, because we have no experience with Rollgate. If somebody has got experience with it, um, that is something that we could consider, but uh, I'd have to take a look into it. Um, currently, uh, what we are we are doing for conventions is we have got the folks that have set up the online uh, online games for game or uh, for GaryCon and uh, and um, GaryCon and like two other conventions. I forget which the other other two conventions were, um, but they are doing like the gener general uh, population games for uh, for GameholeCon. Um, the people from um, from Jasper's Game Day, uh, at, at this point, I believe they are going to be the ones that are going to be hosting and uh, and streaming the uh, the charity streams that we do, and those are going to be all the um, the celebrity games where we've got Amy Vorpal and uh, Satine and uh, and uh, the various other people uh, that are normally our special guests doing uh, doing their streams for charity. Um, the charity is going to be uh, is going to be extra life, um, even though Red Nose Day was the uh, charity for D and D Live. We are going back to extra life because uh, Red Nose Day got our money already. I think is <laughs> the gist of that. Um, so, uh, if you've got any information about Rollgate or any experience using Rollgate, and you wanted to like maybe give a, a pitch for it, um, just go ahead and email it to us. Um, you, you probably have several ways of being able to. Uh, get in touch with us, but uh, you can uh, you can email me with that information. If you don't know it yet, my email is uh, Mister dot Zombie. It's spelled out M I S T E R dot Zombie at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll definitely take a look into it. Um, so, uh, current advancement gold. Uh, yes, Aaron. The the current advancement gold and magic item rules are solid AF. Very 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 well said. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, yeah, Ben, from the, the general gist of what I'm getting is that the season nine advancement rules, everybody's happy with them as far as admins, as far as wizards go. Um, I, uh, I'd put out a, a tweet, uh, earlier when I was, um, setting up, uh, I was cleaning up in my paperwork and whatnot. And I was going through my, my first a AL character and seeing that like DM rewards were just XP, no gold, no downtime, no nothing, just XP. Um, so it's, uh, it is definitely a much better system the way it is now. So it doesn't matter, you know, it, it, it it's, I don't see it changing anytime soon because uh, no matter how much people want to see diff things differently, it is definitely the best system we've had so far. Uh, so, uh, yes, the, 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 I think the general consensus is that it would stay that way. Um, uh, play by post system. Yeah. Well, if it's play by post system, um, we'll see. I don't, I, I, I know that that won't happen with a uh, with a convention event um, just because play by post is is too slow for uh, doing convention uh, time slots but uh, it's nothing that we couldn't set it up on our discord uh, channel for our local events and set it uh, set up those to go so 
Yeah, as week as an alternative to weekly games, definitely. I think that there's people that might be interested in that, at least the kinds of people that maybe have issues with the tech of, that's involved with running online games. You know, don't want to have to do deal with a webcam or a headset or anything like that. Um, doing something through uh, through that uh, through a play by post might not be a bad a bad choice, a bad option. Some of the AO mods will probably be difficult to do uh, play by post, but it's it's worth giving it a try. And uh, you know, if it uh, you try it and it doesn't work out, eh, no harm, no foul. You just you know go back and do it some other way. Um, so um, I know it's probably too early to <clears throat> to call or whatever because no season ten rules or whatever. But this rumored book that's coming out in November that's going to have these variant rules. Do you? I know. I know. Again, it's probably too early to tell with the season ten rules. But will that count as a plus one? Do you know? Do you think? Do you think it might count as the um, plus the plus one? Honestly, I can't. I, I have no way of even confirming or denying whether or not that book is actually happening. Um, rumored books happen all the time, and I can guarantee you that quite often the rumored books are incorrect. Like the rumored books became a poll of what, what are they going to announce at D&D Live? I specifically didn't answer the poll because I knew it was going to be on D&D Live, and I signed an NDA saying I wouldn't say anything. Um, so, uh, but it, if in that four options that were put on that poll, Neither, none of them said Icewind Dale. So, uh, is is that book actually happening? It may not be. Um, if it does, and there are player options that are in a book, um, that will likely become a plus one, and that is going to be something that the admins will decide once the book is released. Um, they don't make that decision before the book releases. They let people see the options before they make a ruling on it, basically. That way they can get some feedback. Um, it, even if it's just like, you know, feedback from their usual DMs or checking with the convention organizers, like, you know, me, Thomas, uh, David, Christ, you know, are they going to, what do you think of it? Um, that kind of stuff. So you'll, you'll find out once that the book releases, uh, which will honestly be the same time I do. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, any, and yes, Aaron, you're, you're correct. Anything, any time they make a ruling on whether or not uh, those rules are going to be used, and if it's a plus one, it would definitely hit the player's guide that, uh, that is put up on DMs Guild. Um, if, you got, if you get the DMs, uh, or if, if you get the player and DM pack on, uh, on DMs Guild, um, every time it gets updated, you'll get notified and you can re download it, and it's a free download, so there's no reason not to but that will definitely let you know, hey, this is what's coming up. Um, so uh, they're they are definitely going working towards the most solid uh, system that they can. And, uh, and they're uh, definitely looking at our best interests uh, when it comes to that. So um, I think whatever they decide, you'll probably, uh, you'll probably definitely be happy with, uh, with the results on it. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, any other questions then, uh, with the state of things? We skipped I, one I, earlier, I think. Did we? Yeah, it's from Benjamin Hare to everyone. Uh, since mods will be so sparse for season ten at Game Hole, will it be possible to run mods from previous seasons? Um, I think that it is. Uh, it is definitely a possibility. Um, what I uh, what I think uh, is going to happen is we're, we'll make a determination as far as the amount of uh, saturation we need to have with the season ten um, mods, and uh, we'll make a determination on that versus uh, Eberron and uh, Border Kingdoms. So if we schedule. Uh, uh, season 10, Eberron and Border Kingdoms, and those fill up, and we uh, we run out of uh, we we run out of uh, a space for players to sign up. Uh, we'll definitely look at that and maybe doing some older stuff or doing some, uh, you know, hey, we're going to do time blocks where we do this campaign sort of a thing. There's there's a number of different options of what we can do, but yes, we will we will consider that. 
Um, biggest consideration uh, for that would be if, um, if you own the content already. If you own the content already, um, we'll probably open it up with, uh, hey, you know, here's a suggestion. I'd like to run some pip yaps guide, uh, guide to the nine hells. Okay, well, you know, what, which mods do you want to run out of there? Because there's a bunch of smaller mods that are at the various tiers in that book. Um, I could definitely see that uh, that happening. Um, anytime the uh, the admins put out a book like that, that kind of is one of the things that takes precedence because I see that it gets run at the Cold Iron Conventions because of Greg's association with that uh, with that convention. Um, and I could definitely see that being something that uh, players would want to get more of because there's probably not as, as wide a prevalence of that in other areas. If an admin doesn't, you know, live there, it might not be happening at conventions. Um, you'll probably see some uh, uh, author only events happening as well. Um, it's just going to determine what the admins have got for availability once we start to schedule them in. So. All right. Oh, another one came in uh, with continuing to use Discord. Any chance of organizing groupings such as organizers, DMs, etc.? Um, possibly. Uh, I think that's going to. Um, I could potentially see setting up roles. I've started to set up roles. Uh, we set up like an FAQ, and I assigned roles to the uh, to the uh, organizers for that and. Uh, Aaron had uh, messaged me saying that uh, he couldn't uh, view anything, but we don't have anything in the FAQ section right now. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be uh, we'll be looking at doing that. And once we've once we get like that set up and we get a little bit more comfortable setting up roles for people, yeah, we will probably start to set up roles for DMs and whatnot, and then you know give more control over to the DMs to like their various channels. Um, so um, yeah, entirely possible. Uh, it all depends on how much time I've got. And now that we're getting towards the end of the first drafts for Gamehole Con, I'm probably going to have a little bit more time on my hands. Um, and it also depends on if the NCAA allows football and uh, other sport, uh, sport events to happen. If they don't, I'm probably still going to be on half time for the rest of the year. <laughs> so half time being 20 hours a week. Just because it's not explicitly stated on the Gamehole Con website, for some clarity, Virtual Gamehole Con will be taking place the same weekend. Yes, it will most definitely be the same weekend. It will definitely be a Thursday through Sunday. Um, it's going to have a little bit more flexibility as to start and stop times. Um, we are probably going to shake it up a little bit just because um, when doing it from 8 a.m. to midnight is fine and good when everybody's in the same time zone. We're not all going to be in the same time zone no more, so we might have a little bit of flexibility with that. But yes, it'll be, uh, it'll definitely be that weekend. So, um, do we have any designers tinkering around with ah? Do we have any designers tinkering around with the Madison Ale Discord server-specific uh, reaction icons? Not currently, Ben. <laughs> that was that was totally silly of my part. I was just like, hey. <laughs> Is anybody if, doing this? If anybody wants to and has the ability to do so, feel free. We will definitely, uh, we will definitely take that uh, because uh, anything we can do to enhance the uh, the interactivity on our uh, Discord server, I think, is a good thing. Um, my main concern is that we've got a lot of players, and we, for all of the kind of tripping over each other trying to set up games on Discord, uh, it's a lot of the same people. So. We are only getting like a fraction of our people showing up onto Discord to set up online games. And so um, I want to make sure that everybody that has the ability to, you know, get involved in gaming has that uh, has that opportunity because um, let's face it, we're all pretty much just sitting at home and have nothing to do. Uh, gaming is probably going to be your only uh, only source of an outlet uh, these days um, or one of your few. So anything we can do to increase that would be better. Um, yeah, I will, Brian. I just saw your message. Uh, to tack on this question, since moving online, it seems adventurously has become less centralized in terms of days, times, frequencies, etc. So 
So it has become hard to figure out what is being played without simply asking every day. Is there someone, some better way to organize things? I'm sure there's a much better way of organizing things. Um, not anything that we've set up yet. Um, I could potentially see setting up like a, a Google calendar and giving access. Um, but then the question is how we mitigate the access to that Google calendar because that basically becomes another thing that the administrators have to administrate. Um, possible that we'll do that. Uh, I could see definitely see doing that. Um, I could set up uh, different uh, channels for days of the week. Um, so looking for group and Monday, looking for group Tuesday, so on and so forth. Um, you know, or renaming it something different than looking for group, but uh, uh, we'll look into some better ways of doing that. Uh, I would definitely say for now, keep checking the general and the looking for group uh, tracks. Um, eventually you will likely uh, fall into a group of people where you are doing either a reoccurring hardcover or just doing the modules in order as a cohesive group, um, which has kind of happened with I know pickles on Mondays. Um, my Thursday table's been the same Thursday table that was uh, meeting at the event physically. Um, so that if you if that happens, that's kind of the best outcome that you can hope for. But then uh, otherwise, yeah, we'll look into some better ways to uh, to organize that and track it for people. Um, yeah, pretty much, Aaron. That is. Uh, uh, Aaron's comment in chat for uh, for the video and people are watching us uh, ahead of, or after the fact. Current Peregrine seems to be one, DM announces the game at date and time. Two, players sign up for game. Three, games gets played. Three, A, DM's channel explodes over the course of two to four hours. Lather, rinse, repeat for the most part. For the most part except on uh, the couple of instances where we're using Zoom or Google Groups to, uh, to run the game. Um, there are some Discord bots that will help with scheduling. Eh, we'll take a look at that. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, sending us that link, Ryan. RPG-schedule.com. We'll take a look at it and see, uh, see how that works out. Um, yeah, if we've... I am, I am by no means a master of Discord. Um, I've set it up and I've uh, created channels and I've done everything that is very Slack-like to do in it, which I'm more familiar with Slack. Um, so we will, you know, we will do what we can. If any of you have got any more uh, uh, experience with uh, some of these bots with setting up schedules, calendars and things like that, let us know. Um, and we'll uh, we'll figure out what's going to be the best system, and we can uh, we can get something set up for them, uh, help the most people uh, effectively. Um, uh, until we get another question in, uh, there is one thing that uh, Brian reminded me of to bring up, and that is um, the code of conduct. Uh, so, as some of you uh, are familiar with with the code of conduct from back when there was a centralized code of conduct uh, for all of AL. Um, the reason that there is no longer a centralized code of conduct for Adventures League is Adventures League has no way of enforcing it. Um, and so rather than having the group of admins telling us, this is your code of conduct, you have to follow this, um, they are giving suggestions to code of conduct content and asking each event to come up with their own. So if we wanna have an event, convention, whatever happening, uh, we have to release a code of conduct and then we have to put it up onto a website and we send it into them and they will approve it. Um, for general, what uh, we've done for all of our stuff is I've directed them to the Game Whole Con code of conduct because Alex is a lawyer and writes a much better document than I, I can covering all of the bases. Um, and uh, honestly, that is exactly what we would be creating would be the Game Whole Con, con code of conduct, except for looking for an orange shirt if you've got a problem. If you're looking for an orange shirt at one of our venues, you're not gonna find them. Uh, <laughs> and if you do, they'll go, huh? Uh, so in essence, that's what it's going to be. We are going to set up our own code of conduct. Um, we were in the process of creating that when the pandemic got, uh, brought us all into lockdown. Um, so 
Yeah, new rule at Oregon Airs, they have to wear orange. I've already got two, uh, I've already got two neon yellow shirts for stage crew. I'm not going with blaze orange too. Um, get out my old hunting uh, hunting gear and just wear that full body suit uh, of blaze orange. Um, the little tag on the back, instead of the deer hunting tag, it's gonna be, you know, AL, um, AL logo. Uh, so, um, Wisconsin Cardinal, no, Aaron. That is fifty percent of my uh, of my uh, thing. I get two new shirts minimum every uh, August that are Cardinal red. I do not need more Cardinal red. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, we had the uh, we had the start of uh, we had the start of a, a code of conduct going, and we're going to go through it again. Uh, the original plan was we would create the code of conduct. Um, Aaron Nagel, who does all of our printing, would print it out. Um, if you all remember back in season seven, we had those big uh, graveyards that were on the, uh, the on the foam board. Um, we would do them in foam board and then we would be hanging them up at the venue. Um, we'd either be hanging them up or standy. However, they'd be flexible enough to do either or. Um, and that would be the code of conduct. And it would basically be um, the gist of our code of conduct is going to include uh, the basics of what we all are going to assume coming out of the gate, this is an inclusive and open gaming uh, gaming community. Um, we are not going to uh, we are not going to uh, we are not going to disallow somebody to game in our space based on any characteristic they've got: uh, race, gender identity, um, sexual preference, anything. So. Um, if there is a person that wants to learn how to play the game, we're going to help teach them how to play the game. The things that are going to uh, that are going to uh, be disallowed are going to be anything that infringes upon the fun of other people. If a situation happens at a table where one player is, this is how I play, this is how I have fun, and everybody else at the table wants to stop coming based on the way that person is having fun at the table, we're gonna have a discussion. And by we, it's gonna be the organizers and eventually the organizers and the venue owner manager. Um, depends on the venue. Like if it's Misty Mountain Games, it's gonna be me and Brian or Doc and Brian talking to the person because Brian is the owner and he's very hands-on uh, in his uh, management of the shop. Um, if, it's a, uh, if it's a case of uh, um, Noble Knight, could be uh, it could be James, who is now the um, like basically like an assistant manager over there, or it'll be um, Jessica, who is their uh, store manager or their upfront store manager, as opposed to the warehouse manager. Uh, reason being is that we aren't going to make any decision that is going to be based off of one organizer's uh, um, opinion or decision. That way, it's never going to be a case of you know this person just doesn't like you. So it's going to be a it's going to be a, a, a thing. It has to go through with the venue, at least, either an organizer and a venue person at least. And there's going to be a path of correction. Hey, you've got a problem with X Y Z situation with this player. Here's the way to correct it. Here's what we want to see uh, so that you can come back. And then that'll happen. And if it doesn't happen that's where it becomes more serious. Um, in the history of, uh, of Adventures League in Madison, I think we have had to disallow people from uh, Adventures League twice and like five or six years. It's not a bad record for the number of people that we've got. Um, so, and in each of those instances, those people had a timeout, came back and needed another timeout. And uh, at the second timeout, there's a discussion of is this going to work or not. <laughs> so um, that said, our goal is to make sure that everybody finds a way to just interact, sit down, roll dice, and have fun. Um, our goal has always been to make a situation and a, an environment where we can take people that are brand new to Dungeons and Dragons, sit them down, and teach them how to play the game and then find them a game that they enjoy playing. Um, we understand that people have got different ways that they like to play the game and none of those are completely wrong. Uh, not, I shouldn't say completely wrong, are wrong at all. None of those ways are wrong. 
Um, it's just going to be a question of whether or not those ways work in an open gaming uh, group. There are some situations where that type of a game really involves a slot zero happening and everybody agrees, like all evil campaigns. People, some people like to do those. I don't understand it, but hey, whatever. <laughs> if you want to do it, that involves a very specific, you have a slot zero, everybody decides and discusses and has a thing of saying, yes, this is okay, no, this is not okay. Um, and in Adventures League, I just don't see it happening just because there's too much uh, a chance of just a random person showing up at a table and, and not having fun because of the situation that's going on. So that's, uh, that's what we're seeing. And looks like we got another question. Is there a plan to make the Mad D&D 25th hour code of conduct uh, visible and easily viewable to people new and old? Yes, once we've established the code of conduct and we have, uh, we have laid it out and all of the, uh, all of the uh, organizers have agreed upon it, um, what will happen is uh, we're gonna make it into a file so that we can uh, print it out. Uh, in addition to printing it out, we will be posting it onto the MadisonDnd.com uh, website and posting it uh, likely with a link in our meetup events and on the Discord server in the FAQ section. So um, anybody, it'll, it'll be in that section. If you are new to Adventures League in Madison, a link to the, DN, uh, to the AL uh, player and DM guide on DMs Guild, a link to our code of conduct, uh, a link to any of the uh, our Discord server will kind of all be in that on the meetup group. So yes, um, our website will probably start to uh, start to have more activity and more things being posted to it, especially once we start hitting season ten, because of the fact that we're going to be primarily online probably until um, spring of next year would be my guess. It all depends on how the second wave goes, uh, because everything I'm hearing from uh, people a lot smarter than I is that uh, the second wave is not a question of if, it's a question of when now. Um, so um, that said, when we go back and come into having play public play in a physical space, um, there's a potential that we will limit the amount of people that we are going to seat at a table. Uh, we'll probably limit the number of tables that we fill out based on the venue and our discussions with the venue. Um, and yes, we are in fact still in the first wave because uh, we just can't drop that first wave. Um, and uh, we will also be taking into consideration some of the practices we started with that last uh, charity event. Uh, that last charity event that we did before the, that was literally I think our last event. I don't even think you guys ran on Monday after that. <coughs> Excuse me is uh, you know we had uh, we had a kitchen and bathroom cleaner uh, like so kitchen and bathroom cleaner and we were spraying down the tables between uh, between game slots um, doc and i sprayed down our dice and our phones um, you know people uh, uh, there were a few people wearing masks at that point uh, i believe scott you and john were wearing masks at, uh, uh, to the event um, we were definitely telling people you know wash your hands throughout the day um, especially if you know you cough and you know, cough into your elbow, but then definitely go wash your hands. Um, the entire you know gambit of those things, we'll likely have like a checklist of our procedures up at the HQ desk before we run another event like that, where we say, okay, this is what we're going to do to make sure the area is clean and sanitary and sanitized for the players before the event, during the event, and then after the event, so that we leave it at least as good as we found it, if not better. So um, I, I think our, our plan is the goal is to leave the venue space cleaner than we found it in every situation so that you know, we aren't leaving a potential health hazard for the next gaming group that uses it the next day or whatever. So um, that will definitely uh, be something that we will have more discussions of and we'll have more information put up before we even get close to opening up a, a public play event again. Um, so that is uh, definitely something that Brian, Mark, Ruth, Pickle, Doc and I, and Lance will be discussing. So um, let's see here. Uh, 
Yeah, you did kind of look like a duck uh, when you had that on, Scott. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, in Discord, is it possible to reorder the channels so that all the general ones are at the top and all the table DM specific ones are below? I don't know. That's a good question. I will, uh, I will look into that. Um, I know that Michael Jones was, uh, was telling me that there was a way to group them together so that we could group the DMs text and voice, uh, voice chat to, uh, channels together. Um, I just haven't gotten, uh, gotten into doing that yet. Um, but yes, I think that's possible to reorder them. It's just a question of me figuring out how to reorder them and then doing so. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at that. It's a good, 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 uh, good question. Good, uh, good thing to ask. And according to the article professed by uh, Professor Roman, face-to-face gaming is very bad for COVID safety. Face-to-face -face gaming has a number of issues. We are not going to be six feet apart. Um, you're going to be sitting at a table with other people for two to four hours. Um, in theory, you're touching the same objects if you're moving minis. Um, so yes, it's... There's going to be a lot of things. Our, our gaming will be different if and when we go back to doing uh, public events, public play events. Um, you could see dungeon masters putting out maps and minis and then just you tell them where you want to move things and they'll move them for you kind of a thing to eliminate the amount of, uh, amount of uh, interaction there is. Um, if you saw on Critical Role, they announced they're going to be bringing back their show next week but they also were announcing that it is different. They've now got each station for each of the players at least six to 12 feet away from each other. Um, so you're probably gonna see a very similar situation where the map and uh, minis and whatnot are near Matt as the DM so that he's moving them all with just the camera pointed down on that map. Um, likely that is going to be a similar type of a situation that would be the most effective for us, but is the least possible to happen in most of the venues. If we did that in any one of these venues, like Noble Knight, we'd be going down to three tables being able to play. Um, so not necessarily feasible, which is why um, likely the us going back in our fashion that we're used to would be, um, would be uh, either having herd immunity or a vaccine available. Um, that is, the only th way that uh, that Gamehole Con or any convention in uh, in Dane County is going to happen is if we've got a vaccine, basically, um, because we cannot guarantee herd immunity unless it's just the people in Wisconsin. And even then, I don't think that we can really guarantee that. It's going to be the question of a vaccine. Um, so, uh, and to answer your question, uh, Ben, uh, Critical Role is a uh, is a uh, an actual play uh, uh, stream on Discord. Uh, it's a bunch of voice actors playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's been around for several years. Are uh, you Twitch. being are you, Twitch? Yes. Are you being facetious? You're you're smiling at me. I'm guessing you being, actually know I'm what being it is. Impossibly facetious. I'm being okay. He's the, he's in the butt as per usual. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I've noticed there are some video channels that are above the actual voice channel in, in Discord. Video is something that has been introduced by Discord recently. Um, when we first started uh, the, our lockdown, we did not have video on Discord. Uh, we, we had it in individual like calls. You could do individual group calls. Um, Ruth is aware of this, our Tuesday sh uh, streaming show, we used to do it in Discord, uh, a Discord group chat, and we would open up a video call. Um, but uh, it's now available in the channels now. So yeah, there are some video uh, channels that are above the actual voice channels in, uh, in Discord. Um, it's going to be a question of how well it's going to work because uh, there was already some issues with Discord uh, having a lot of um, lag from just the amount of activity going on it. If you do video, if everybody starts doing video streams, it'll start to probably lag some more. Um, so keep that in mind. If you start to see issues with the video, uh, the video uh, feed, that's probably what it is. But yes, if we want to open one up, um, it is possible to open them up. I, somebody may have been able to create, uh, create those, but, um, but yeah, it doesn't, uh, if you, if you can't create it, just let us know and we will create one for you. 
Uh, yes, Scott, you did the map and mini thing first. Actually, no, I think there were other people that have done it as well on Twitch. I mean, you know, there have been people streaming actual play forever. But uh, but yes, I've uh, I've heard about uh, your game and having a, a separate uh, camera for your uh, for your map. That's actually a cool idea. Uh, gaming outdoors, like in a park, um, definitely possible. Uh, Having uh, having been part of, uh, my father was uh, one of the organizers for Festa Italia for uh, a good many years, and I can tell you, weather is always an issue, and we can't guarantee that until probably the morning of the event, and sometimes not even then because we live in Wisconsin. Um, so yeah, it's possible we could uh, we could do some outdoor uh, outdoor gaming events in a park. Um, the downsides to that are going to be. Um, most of the parks where we would have access to that kind of a thing, we would have to likely rent the park out, which is going to involve a rental fee. Um, we'll have to bring out tables and chairs, which is going to involve renting tables and chairs. Um, if we rent tables and chairs, they're going to be horribly uncomfortable chairs. <laughs> um, we could have it set up where we're going to rent some tables and chairs. Bring your own camper chairs if you want to be comfortable. Um, but yes, this it's it's potential. There is some potential to that. Um, that's something that we could discuss, but honestly, by the time we get around to organizing something like that to happen, um, it's, we're, we're going to be starting to hit into fall where nobody's going to be wanting to sit outside for that long anyways, because it's going to start to get cold fast because Wisconsin. Um, and yes, we can't guarantee herd immunity without a vaccine, um, but yeah. Uh, to, to, to actual voice channel, not video. Ah, okay. Um, somebody may have moved their, uh, moved their stuff around if they were able to. So yeah, possible. Um, so, uh, if you are, if you're one of the people that is just kind of joining into this and are not, haven't been doing any of the streaming games, Zoom is a great way of doing a, a, a game. I know that my Thursday group always, uh, is always using Zoom. Um, Pickles Monday group has, uh, used Discord, Google Meets, and Zoom, and we've found Zoom to be the most stable of them. Um, not to mention you can have cool backgrounds like having black razor literally behind your head looking like it's been sunk into you, as the case of what Pickle's got on his uh, background right now. Um, so if you, uh, you wanna have Zoom, Zoom is gonna involve a, a fee uh, to do so. You can get a free account, but the free account only allows you to do 40 minute game or 40 minute streams or games in our case, 40 minute streams. And I believe you're limited to the number of people. It's the limit is greater than your usual table of D and D. So that part doesn't matter. It's the 40 minutes. Um, it's 14 99 a month to, uh, to get uh, unlimited uh, stream potential, which is why we've got this going on because I have bought that so that I can run my D and D games. Um, Google meets is free. Uh, the discord is free, obviously. So, um, do, 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 do. yeah, jury's still out on Discord. Yep, definitely. Uh, yeah, um, for those of you concerned, I saw your post, uh, Scott, about the security issues. There are no security issues on Zoom. Um, there was a security issue like a couple of years ago, um, and they have updated security since then. Um, they have updated security since uh, this uh, thing came out. And what it was is when you signed up for an account, everybody in your email domain would have access to know that you have a Zoom account so that they could set up a meeting with you. Reason being is Zoom was originally created for conference calls between companies. So if you put in a Gmail account, everybody on Gmail at first, it's not that way anymore, would know you had an account and could search for you. That's not the case anymore. Um, honestly, it's the most stable of the platforms that I've seen. Um, WebEx is probably just as stable, uh, but as I was telling Brian, who's very familiar with WebEx, as he works on a campus as well, <laughs> we, we get uh, WebEx for our campus use. Um, I thought WebEx was uh, much worse than it was because everybody in my department uh, had just 
bad video, bad sound. And I'm like going, Oh, this is, this is horrible. It doesn't work very well. And that's when I figured out I was like that meme. I was like the only person in the, in the department that was a streamer. So I had a good webcam. I had a good audio setup and everybody else just had these base model webcams that were set up in their notebooks. I'm like, Oh, I'm that guy. Never mind. So I think WebEx is pretty solid. I think Zoom is pretty solid. Um, the other ones, they're free. Microsoft Teams is free. Uh, if you've got Microsoft 365 or Office 365, um, but uh, but yeah, so it's up to you. It's it, if you're looking for free, you can do it easily for free. If you're looking to spend a little money to get some uh, get something decent, um, you can uh, you can definitely pick it up. Um, Zoom has kind of become a standard for most people. Understand it. Most people are using that for their happy hours from home. Um, I mean, hell, even even the uh, the talk shows, the nightly talk shows, are using it for uh, for connecting up with people. So, um, but anyways, uh, as far as being able to convince people of that fact, Scott, I don't know what to tell you. Pickle had the same issue on Monday nights. And uh, eventually it just got to the point where the people that had issues with Zoom went away and we were like, hey, cool, we can use Zoom now. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 if you can't convince them, you can't convince them and you're gonna have to uh, go the other way. But uh, you can, we can talk to you about it further if you, uh, if you wanna try and come up with some ideas on how to convince them or if they want somebody else to talk to that's used it for, for work and for pleasure. So, um, uh, let's see if we've got any more questions. Teams uses Skype. Yeah, that's true. It does. But uh, I had a, the only experience I have with Teams is I used it for a, a, a conference call with Wizards of the Coast because that's what they have access to. Um, and I did it from up in Door County. So that was, that was a win for me. I, on my crappy Wi-Fi in Door County, I was able to, you know, do a solid call through Teams. Um, Yes, once your 40 minutes is over, you can just relaunch and do another 40 minutes. It's just kind of a pain to do that, especially if you're mid-game. So. Um, it does give you like a warning time though. So you have yes. like 10 yeah. minutes of, uh, five minutes of warning or something. Yeah, it does. So My wife like, it on the 40 minute plan and I hear her, you know, oh, we're getting the warning now. So yeah. Yeah. So you can just like close it out and relaunch it at a good point too. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and do, 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 do. yeah, yeah, Ted, uh, you know, I've, I've done that before. That's actually half the reason I joined Pickles is because I had the Zoom account. <laughs> I'm like here, streaming. Plus it gave me an excuse to play on Monday as opposed to DMing. Um, all right. Uh, looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, uh, I don't think any uh, any more questions have come up. So um, unless anybody's got any more questions, uh, one sec, let me 